All the best players come through here before the NFL draft, which is just feels like it's minutes away. Well, you're not going to want to miss this guy. He is one of the best defensive players in the United States of America. He's fast. He's a tackling machine and probably the sharpest player any time he is on the field. Mm. He's got instincts for days. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Georgia linebacker Nakobe Dean. What's up, Nakobe? What's up, what's up? How y'all doing? Uh, we're doing great, and we're, we're getting nostalgic. We're looking back to the year 1980. 1980 was the last time your Georgia Bulldogs won a national title until this year. On the strength of you, my friend, you were a key member of that incredible run. It's been a little bit, Nicole. You're getting ready for the draft. Look back. What was it like to win the big one and to be able to say for the rest of your life, I am a national champion? <laughs> Yeah, it, it was it's a surreal feeling. Just knowing all the hard work you put in over the uh, over the off season, everything you did that you didn't know was gonna work. Um, that you know it paid off. You know it paid off, and I was able to do it with the uh, with the brothers that I've been working with all off season. Well, congrats, champ. Uh, what an unbelievable accomplishment. You had an unbelievable career at Georgia. I think we might have to call this the Dean's List here. Okay. Uh, Ooh, Kyle nice knows what that's all about down in Princeton. You got the national championship. Your first team All-SEC. You win the Butkus Award, which is the nation's top linebacker. I'm curious where you have that trophy now. And I, I, after you answered that, I want you to just tell us what changed. What, what did you work on from your freshman year to your junior year to, to help you win that trophy? Uh, the, the trophy is at home in Mississippi with my mother. Uh, she she kind of take all my awards and take it home. But um, what changed for me was basically in the offseason, uh, I had missed the whole spring, banged my shoulder up. So... Um, I was able to see the game from a different perspective. I was able to see it from more of a coach perspective, and it just kind of opened the game of me, uh, game up to me. The whole under, uh, understanding the playbook, the way uh, the game's supposed to be played, and things like that. And uh, of course, the work, uh, the work has always been there, but it, it didn't do nothing but um, intensify, um, and it, it's gonna continue to intensify. I gotta continue to work to get better every single day. You know, uh, Nakobe, I've been watching you play for a long time, and what my role on this show is a lot of times I give the front office gossip and the information. I texted a GM last night. I said, give me some stuff on Nakobe Dean. He said, this guy could be Roquan Smith at the next level. He could be Shaq Thompson. Mm. He could be even better than both those guys because he is an alpha amongst alphas. You seem very soft-spoken right here, but take us into the huddle and onto the field of what makes you a leader and the guy that is always the one calling the shots on that Georgia defense that we know is loaded with NFL talent. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, on, on the field, I can be intense. Uh, I can be intense as be, you know, uh, you flip this switch and it kind of uh, turns the game up a little bit more, but um Basically, on the field, you you able to be, uh, you. I'm out there. I love it. I'm uh, passionate about the game, so I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it all the passion and effort that I have. So, being able to flip that switch and kind of become intense, become that become that leader. I look to be the leader on the field. Oh, uh, I, I, whatever is best for the team. You know, I feel like if um if the team is uh need, need leadership, then I feel like I can do that and step up and do that. But if, if I team had got a strong leadership and I feel like I can lead and be the best I can do. You know, whatever uh, gets the team wins is uh, what works for me. An alpha mm. among alphas. That's I like good list, that. Right? Uh, okay, you played in the state of Georgia where the Hall of Famer and former Atlanta Falcon Deion Sanders said, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. Nicobe, you are bringing some major swag along with your game. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. The tipped hat. Talk to us about your style and what we can expect to see once you're in the NFL, do you have a stylist? Is this all you? Is it your mom? Walk us through. It, it, it's definitely my uh, my mother and my girl. For the most part, they they kind of uh, get together. They just bring them. They kind of bring them to me, or like they'll show me. They'll send me pictures, and I I get it. I give the yay or the nay because sometimes they bring <laughs> stuff that I, I, that I just don't uh, that I don't like. So uh, me personally, I'm not a big shopper. So um, if I do. Uh, seem to find something, I just go get it. But 
uh, most clients, they they are just always searching for stuff, always looking for stuff that they think I look uh, good in. I give the last, oh. the last say so. So, yeah. There you go. Those What's, pregame fits. They look great. Let's go. I want to know about the nays. What's something you say nay <laughs> yeah, to? Yeah, turtlenecks. Nicole? Are you not into turtlenecks? Yeah, What's the vibe? I'm not, I'm not a big turtleneck guy. I'm not. You, uh, I knew you it. Can I can see. I can, I can feel it. I wore a turtleneck probably once, uh, once last year, but I, I might get into it. I might get into it. Um, the, the little uh, fedora and brims that I wear on my hat. So I feel like I'm. A, I'm th that's not gonna do nothing. But uh, my collection ain't gonna do nothing but grow. Now that I'm in the league, <laughs> but um, yeah, amazing. Yeah, turtlenecks are an enraging garment. It just it angers people just the sight of it. I think yes. your instincts are right on that, just as they are on the field. Uh, last question. I'm asking <laughs> this for a reason. The Kobe. Who was your favorite NFL team growing up when you were a little kid? Who'd you like? It was the Steelers. It was the Steelers. After Ooh. I seen them, uh, okay, Cardinals in the Super Bowl. I think that was my first Super Bowl ever. It was the Steelers after that. <laughs> Well, they're in them a lot, and the reason I ask is that Mike Tomlin watches the show. Peter, who in the Steelers' front office will be watching the show this morning? Well, we do don't think? know who the GM is yet, but Kevin Colbert certainly has a voice there. Omar Khan is over mm -hmm. there. I think a lot of Steelers folks are watching right now. They are, and so are all the other folks around the NFL, the GMs, the decision makers, who are going to be looking at your tape and your, their, your interviews going into the draft. Look back at them right now, Nakobe. They're watching right now. Tell them why they should take you, why you're the best linebacker in this draft, and why you should join their organization on draft night. Uh, I say that my mindset is a match. Um, I'll do anything short of a feeling that's legal uh, to win. Um, my mindset on match. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna be a. Um, I'm gonna be a leader on the field. I'm gonna bring that leadership, and I'm bringing that winning. Uh, that winning mentality. And I'm gonna play with the passion uh, and uh, work to be one of the greatest to ever do it. Mm. You know, we've heard many of those speeches. We've never heard a player say, if it's legal, I'll do it. <laughs> and we love it. N'Kobe, you are going to be a great pro. You're going to look good, feel good, play good, pay good on draft night, man. It's so yeah. good to meet you and go get it. Can't wait to see yeah. that. Good luck. Good luck. No, no turtlenecks. N'Kobe Dean. No. Uh, all right. Well.